Hi, in this next Laravel basics video, we're going to be looking at database seeding. So last time we looked at actually setting up our models and our database. Um, and that was, and then we manually kind of put a few test models in there. But in reality, that's, we don't want to be doing that manually and, and putting loads in. We want to be able to like test our database by just creating a bunch of data that looks kind of realistic. And then we can start building the front end and other things, relationships and make sure it's all working. Um, so that's what seeding is. Um, so if you didn't watch the last video, um, basically we've got a very basic uh, application here that I've not done much. I've created this Pokemon model. Um, I've got a database migration that creates that. So the next step is to add a seeder. So we can do that using Artisan. So we're going to do PHP Artisan. And remember, Artisan is just a PHP file. Um, nothing magic. So we're going to make cedar, and then the cedar is going to be um, it's going to be our Pokemon table cedar. Um, so it's just the model name table cedar, and it will now create um, the cedar file. So it's created that successfully. There's going to be a little bit of configuration we need to do. Um, we need to tell it how to actually seed the data. Um, so it's set, like what this will end up doing is is like you can give this application to someone, they can run the migration and the seeding commands, and it will not only set up the databases from nothing, but also put in some test data, and um, perhaps even you might put in some default kind of admin username and passwords, that kind of stuff going on. Um, so we're just waiting for this to create. There we go. So there's two. Uh, main functions here, or two main PHP files we can see. So you've got the database seeder, which is this is actually what is run when we do the um, the actual database seeding with the with Artisan, and then the Pokemon table seed is the one we just created. Um, so let's start out by actually putting in some stuff here. Um, we need to actually write some code um, to create a, a Pokemon. So let's say um, so P1, same as we did before, really. Um, well, before we do this, actually, uh, we need to make sure we've got the namespace for our Pokemon here. Um, so app uh, po Pokemon. Uh, and then we want to just create a Pokemon. So let's go P1 um, equals new Pokemon. Um, and I've got some extensions here for Visual Studio Code that means I get some nice autocomplete going on. Um, I recommend using a couple of those. I can give you a list of what I'm using if you're interested. So what do we need to fill out in our Pokemon? We want um, name, HP, and type. So let's do name equals Brian. We're not going to be doing kind of actual Pokemon today. We're just going to be generating loads. Um, what was the other one? So name... HP and type. So HP equals 30, 40, say, and then type. So P1 uh, type equals um, water. And that's right. So that's all we need to do. Um, but we need to actually save this into our database. So we're going to do P1 dash save. And because this is the um, we use an eloquent here. We by creating this instantiating a Pokemon, um, this class is then responsible for saving its own persistence, and we can create essentially a new row in the database. So then we can we can run this um, pretty easily. So firstly, I actually want to um, uh, reset our database just to convince you that we haven't got anything going there. So I've reset the database. Then I'm going to migrate it. Um, so migrate in the database. And then I'm going to do artisan db seed. And database seeding is completed successfully. So let's see if that's worked by going into Tinker. So PHP artisan Tinker. Um, remember, this is kind of like our um, command line where we can just kind of check stuff. Um, it's almost like having this PHP Laravel interactive terminal. Um, so we're bringing in the namespace, and then we're going to do Pokemon 
uh, get. And then, okay, that hasn't actually worked. So the reason that hasn't worked, I've just realized, is we forgot to do a step. Um, so if we go to our, so I created the Pokemon Cedar here. So I, I filled out that, but I didn't fill out, I didn't go to the database Cedar itself. So this is what's actually run. And we need to make sure that we include um, the, the actual uh, call to actually run this Pokemon ta uh, table Cedar. This is, this is like the method that's actually run um, when we call the seed. So we want to be doing this um, call, and then we want our Pokemon table Cedar class. Oh, um, there we go. So now, if we go, I'm going to run uh, seed. There we go, seeding Pokemon table Cedar. So now we've actually done it there. Um, so now we go back into Tinker. And then I'm pushing up to get a history of my command so I can just um, get these up again. And now Brian is happily in our database. Now, the thing is, if we were to seed like this, um, we would still have to write out a bunch of these man manually, which is not like it's a bit better than what we were doing last time because this file will be saved. It will be in our version control. We can pass it around. But um, what if we want, if we want to test things properly, we're going to want hundreds of models, not just one or two or even five. Like we want hundreds and we want that data to look semi realistic. And that's where factories come in. And uh, Laravel comes with a, a library called Faker, which can help us create lots of fake data. And eventually we can actually start creating fake relationships. Um, so when we look at relationships between models next time, we'll also use the seeding to set up the relationships. Um, so again, we're going to be using Artisan to set this up. So I'm going to do PHP Artisan make factory. And then we're going to call it po Pokemon factory and then I'm doing minus M to tell it that the model that we want to create a factory for is Pokemon okay and now it's created our um, our factory now I'm gonna re well, actually, I'll, I'll reset the database later um, so what that's created is we have now if we go into database factories we have a Pokemon factory and this is a um, you can see it, it's it's referencing our Pokemon class. It's because we told it what model we were using. It's put in these things for us, and then it's using Faker um, to generate uh, the actual bits and pieces. So Faker is a library, and um, if you go on the Laravel documentation, you can see um, all the different things you can do with Faker. But it, it's fantastic. So, for example, let's have a look what we need. I'm going to copy. Um, so just to help me out here, so I don't have to keep flipping backwards and forwards, I'm going to my Pokemon factory. And basically what we need to do here is we need to tell um, Faker how to fake all these data. So we're going to start, and you do that with, you basically set strings here and then, so that's our one of our property names. This is kind of name pair values. We're actually returning an array here, a name pair um values type array so hp and then what we're actually doing is we're going to give it um give faker some information on on what these things should be so firstly name faker which we can grab from there's a faker uh, instance being passed to this function so we can just do faker and then we can do there's a first name and what this will do is it will just generate a random first name um maker. and then we want a random in fact what i'm going to do i will show you the documentation here here we go okay so this is the the faker documentation and we can see um, all the different 
uh, stuff we can use. So I'm going to look for integer because I want to create an integer. Integer, which is not there. Int. Uh, okay, I'm just going to try it. I'm pretty sure um, that there is. Um, random integer is one of them. So we're going to do um, random integer uh, between. So, well, this is actually, I'm going to have to Google this because we need to know how it works. So, random integer Laravel faker, faker random integer Laravel. Um, I think it's important to to show this process right because the thing is you can't memorize everything um so we got random integer here so what are they saying how can you random unique digits that oh, i don't really want that um no i don't really need a i have seen random integer before so i don't know why it's not on here it's weird. Random number, random element. I suppose if I go random number, there's no information about like uh, random number between. Okay, number between. So let's go faker number between, let's do 10 and 100. Let's see if that works. Um, and then for the type, we have a so, like surprisingly enough, in the base Faker library, there isn't anything to do with Pokemon type. Um, but we can create our own um, using uh, element, random element. So if I do Faker, and then we can do one called random element. And what this will do, I need a comma there, because remember this is an array we're returning. Um, a random element, and it was, it's a random element out of an array that we define. So I can now put some different types in here. So I'm going to put fire, water, um, grass. Uh, let's do electric. Okay, so what it will do now, so what, what we can then do with this is we can say, Right, generate a hundred Pokemon, and the name is just a random first name. Health points is a random number between ten and a hundred. Hopefully, it will get that that's an int. We'll see how that works. I, I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, and then the type. Well, it's one of four things. So, random element: fire, water, grass, electric. Here, you might be doing something like user. Like they might have um, a role or something, and you want to create a bunch of people with different roles. So, the next thing we need to do is go to our um, Pokemon table seeder. And then instead, we're going to type here, uh, we're going to use the factory, um, create a model factory. So then we want app uh, Pokemon class. So we're passing the class, and then let's say 50, and then create. Um, and that will create those. So um, we're passing, so if you look at the, let's have a look at this. So we've defined this function here, right? So we've defined a, a factory that can take a Pokemon class and then this function of faker, and it returns um, a whole load of, a collection basically of, of Pokemon. And we're saying that we want 50 here. So in theory, that should work. Um, so let's see how that go this goes. So I'm going to reset the database again. So let's reset. Let's migrate. And let's seed. And that's uh, db seed. OK, so it's seeded it. Hopefully. Let's go into Tinker and have a look. Again, we're going to use our app um, Pokemon. 
and then we're going to do Pokemon get. Okay, and we've got like 50 odd Pokemon, and it's worked. Okay, and we've even got look, we've got the help that that HP thing worked. So there we go, there we have it. So you, we have got 50 relatively realistic Pokemon, um, even if they're called Colby and Remington. Um, and then you can do really, you can test things. So we can even do things like we can start do, using doing query building. Okay, so let's go Pokemon get uh, where, let's see if this works, um, type is equal to grass. And then we have all the grass Pokemons. Pokemon. We decided that Pokemon was plural. But look at that. There you go. So um, this is what's so this query building thing is really important, and we're going to look at that more when we look at relationships. But you can basically do a lot of MySQL without typing it all out yourself. The MySQL. So we can also do first, um, and you get the first one on that list. So yeah, there you go. Um, so there were some mistakes this time, so, and but we're getting into that thing where it's going to get tricky because we're looking at database relationships and different things. Um, I don't really want to edit out the mistakes because I think it's important for you to see those happen and then see how I deal with it. Um, because that, in a lot of ways, web development and like it, the reality is, your like frameworks change so quickly that you're going to start have to constantly be changing and learning, and. Um, that's kind of the skill you need to learn. And so I think it's useful to see that. Um, if you disagree, feel free to tell me um, in the comments or let me know. Um, yeah, so I'll keep doing these. I should, um, these will come, as I said, I'm doing these as I'm writing my uh, lecture notes for next year. Um, so they will come out in drips and drops. Um, but thanks for watching, bye.